In this video, we are going to learn how to use half-angle formulas to find exact values. Now, I've written the half-angle formulas at the top here as reference. Definitely copy them down when you have some time. So we're going to use the half-angle formulas to find the exact values of each of these expressions. Now, the way we use these half-angle formulas is that this is half of an already known angle. So I'm looking for what angle is that half of? best way to figure that out is just multiply it by 2. And it looks like it's half of 30 degrees. So when I go to use my half angle formula, what I plug in for alpha, for at least for cosine, is going to be 30 degrees. So I'll get the square root of 1 plus cosine of 30 degrees all over 2 using the cosine half angle formula. But now this plus or minus out in front, the purpose for this is that just because I've taken half of this angle doesn't mean it's going to end up in the same quadrant. So I need to know what quadrant does 15 degrees end up in. So 15 degrees would be about right over here. which is the first quadrant, and I know that cosine is positive in the first quadrant, so I should use the positive version of that square root. So to finish out the problem, I'll have the square root of 1 plus the cosine of 30 degrees, which is the square root of 3 over 2, all over 2. And now I have a complex fraction, so within the square root, I'll multiply my numerator by 2 and my denominator by 2, just so I can get rid of that de denominator of 2 within the fraction, giving me the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 4, which is very convenient because this 4 is a perfect square. So this answer for the problem, which I'll put up here, is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. So really convenient. Now let's look at cosecant of 9 pi over 8. Now first, I don't have a formula for cosecant, so I'm going to have to use the reciprocal identity to start, which is 1 over sine of 9 pi over 8. Now that I have sine, I could use the sine half angle formula. But now, what is 9 pi over 8 half of? So I have 1 half times a particular angle. Again, just multiply it by 2, which would change that 8 to a 4. So we have 9 pi over 4 as the angle I'm going to use here. So what this is equal to is the square root of 1 minus the cosine of 9 pi over 4. all over 2. Now I need to figure out what quadrant is 9 pi over 8 in. So I know that 0 is here and pi is on this end, which means that 8 pi over 8 is over here. So 9 pi, would ro 9 pi over 8 would rotate to 8 pi over 8 and a little bit more. This puts us in the third quadrant. For 9 pi over 8. So in the third quadrant, sine is a negative value. And I realized that I didn't put the 1 over, so I have to fix that. 
So this is going to be a negative square root here. Now to take care of the um, one over and one step, I can just take the reciprocal of this fraction. So I can keep the square root, but instead I'll have two in the numerator, because I'm going to use the reciprocal, and it'll be one over two over one minus cosine. Now nine pi over four isn't on my known unit circle, but I can I can subtract an entire period of two pi from it. Now two pi can also be written as eight pi over four. So I could subtract eight pi over four from nine pi over four and evaluate this as one minus cosine of pi over four. So now I have negative the square root of two over one minus the square root of two over two. Again, if I want to simplify that complex fraction, I'll multiply the numerator and denominator of it by two. Which will give me negative the square root of four over two minus the square root of two. Four is a perfect square, so I end up getting negative of two over the square roots of two minus the square root of two. Now I definitely took up some space from my next example, but I won't need as much space for this one. So now let's do tangent of five pi over 12. Which I need to figure out is tangent is half of a particular angle which would be five pi over six. Now I'm going to use not the given plus or minus, which I could use, but instead the, sec the second option, one minus cosine alpha over sine alpha. Because typically I don't have to worry about the plus or minus and leaving just a si sine alpha in my denominator makes it easier to simplify. So I'll get one minus cosine of five pi over six over sine of five pi over six. And I don't need to worry about the plus or minus because I'm using the, one of these two formulas. So when I go to simplify, I'll get one minus cosine of five pi over six is this angle over here, which is negative square root three over two. And sine of five pi over six is the same spot, but one half. And again, if I want to simplify this complex fraction, I'll multiply the numerator and denominator by two, which will give me two, Two times one, the twos will cancel here, but it's minus a negative, so plus the square root of three, all over one. So there's my answer. This is a positive answer. So if I wanted to check if it was positive or negative, where does five pi over 12 lie on my unit circle? Well, this angle right here is pi over two, also known as six pi over 12, if I find a different denominator. So five pi over 12 wouldn't quite reach that 90 degree mark. It would be somewhere over here, which is the first quadrant, and I know that tangent is positive in the first quadrant. Now let's do this next example. If cosine of alpha is equal to negative three-fifths, and my angle's in the quadrant three, it looks like, between pi and three pi over two, let's find the exact value of sine, cosine, and tangents here. Now I'm given cosine of alpha, which means I should probably use these three formulas here since they just have cosine of alpha in them. So for part A, sine of alpha over two is equal to the square root of one minus cosine of alpha over two. Now I know I'm in 
the third quadrant according to this statement right here, which means that sine half of that, so that A is in the third quadrant, but if I were to take half of that, what quadrant would I end up in? So if I look at the same formula, but I just divide everything by two, I mean I get uh, alpha over two, then this will be pi over two on the left here. And on the right, don't why I put that equal sign, it would be three pi over four. Now this isn't in the third quadrant. This would be in the second quadrant. It would be between pi over two and three pi over four. So now I'm thinking not what's in the third quadrant, but what's in the second quadrant when I evaluate these angles for alpha over two. I just take the interval I have and divide it all by two to get that. So now when I'm in quadrant two, sine of alpha over two is a positive value. So I'm gonna use the positive square root here. So to finish simplify, and I'll have the square root of one minus negative three fifths all over two, which would be the square root of one plus three fifths all over two, which would be the square root of eight fifths all over two, which when you divide by two, you multiply by a half. So this is the same as the square root of eight tenths which can be simplified as well. I could take the square root of eight, which simplifies to two square roots of two, but the square root of 10 cannot be simplified any further. So I'm left with just the square root of 10 in my denominator. Now, if I wanted to rationalize that denominator, I would multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 10, which could simplify this to four square roots of five over 10, because that would get the square root of 20. So an alternate solution could be four square root of five over 10. Now let's look at part B. Cosine of alpha over two, which will be the square root of one plus cosine of alpha all over two. And now I'm in quadrant two, cosine is negative in quadrant two. So I'm using negative square roots. So I'll have negative the square root of one plus negative three fifths all over two, which I'm gonna put a little like bubble here so I don't confuse my work. This gives me negative the square root of two fifths over two. Oh, I'm realizing here I could have made that two fifths here. That could have also been simplified even further. Which gives me negative the square root of two tenths. And I'm make a better choice rather than taking the square root of the top and the bottom here. I'm actually going to simplify the fraction before I get into that next step. Because if I would have done that, I would have gotten four over five, which would have been two over the square root of five, which could have simplified it to two square roots of five over five, which is an even more simplified answer, which is just that simplified. So here I'll make it negative the square root of one fifth, which gives me negative one over square root five, which can be rationalized to negative the square root of five over five. Now the last one, part C, we're going to do tangents of alpha over two. And even though we usually prefer these two, since we're already giving cosine of alpha, we should just use the first one. So the square root of one minus cosine alpha over one plus cosine alpha. Now tangent is negative in the second quadrant, so I'm gonna use a negative here. And this will simplify I plug in to one minus the negative three fifths over one plus negative three fifths. 
giving me negative the square root of 1 plus 3 fifths, which is 8 fifths, over 1 plus negative 3 fifths, which would be 2 fifths. The 5's will cancel, leaving me with 8 over 2, which is 4. So we have negative square root of 4, which simplifies to negative 2. Which, again, I could figure out because I know what sine of alpha over 2 and cosine of alpha over 2 is. If I were to put 2 square root of 5 over 5 over negative square root of 5 over 5, I should simplify the negative 2. And that is how you use half-angle formulas to find exact values.